Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Cami Harvey. I'm obviously not Tammy Anderson Ward, <laughs> but I get to start things off today with the presenters that we have lined up. And I'm just gonna let you know too, if you tag and share this, um, this Facebook Live, you get two free tickets for the Energy Healing Conference in Ogden that's coming up in just a few weeks, in three weeks, June 23rd through the 25th. Again, my name is Cami Harvey. I get to be one of the presenters this year. I'm very excited about it. Um, just a little about me. I am a licensed therapist, a sound healer, and a trained drum circle facilitator. So I've got like lots of instruments with me that I'm going to show you in a second. <laughs> that I'm excited that I'll be bringing. I'll be bringing um, almost oh, let's see, 200 to 300 instruments to this conference. I get to on Friday night, which is June 24th at six o'clock, I get to um, have a big drum circle outside with drums like this. This is a djembe drum. And I've got like little baby djembes and a bunch of frame drums and a bunch of other instruments too. And then on Saturday morning at nine o'clock um, indoors, I get to do a presentation, which will be connecting connecting psychotherapy and spirituality through drumming i really like to talk about the spirit of drumming and the science of drumming because as a therapist of course i love when things are a you know evidence-based practice in addition to what things do to help us heal spiritually as well so it's something i'm really excited about and um and so yeah so let's see as a therapist so i have a private practice and I see a lot of clients that are dealing with trauma. I'm trained in something called EMDR, and I also do ketamine therapy. And then in addition to being a therapist, I have a business called Flowing River Circle, and you can check it out at flowingrivercircle.com. If you sign up for my newsletter, I've got a free offering to give you that I'll talk about in a minute too. It's something that I'm really passionate about. This company is one where um, I, do drum circles and interactive rhythm events and sound healing sessions to help build connections and promote wellness for companies and for communities. So I'm really excited to come share it with the Energy Conference. Now with, with drumming, a lot of people tend to feel intimidated maybe by it. I think I had a friend that coined the term instrument phobia that a lot of us have where we think, especially as adults, we feel like we're not creative in lots of ways, including when it comes to making music, even if it is just like pounding on a drum. As kids, it's like most children love music. And if they, when I do groups for children and they see all these instruments that I have, they get very excited, they wanna try everything mm -hmm. and do everything. A lot of times though, I think that some of us are survivors of music lessons where maybe we were forced to like have to play the piano or play a musical instrument and we didn't resonate with it or we kind of lost the joy of creating music and instead it was getting bogged down by, um, by having to practice, having to perform and losing the joy in it. So with my drum circles, though, I really focus on making them accessible, engaging, meaningful, and fun. And a lot of times after my circles, people will come up to me and they'll be like, whoa, like at first I was like, I'm going to do what? I'm going to bang on a drum? Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, especially when I've done them for like conferences as an icebreaker when everyone's coming into this like large conference and there are musical instruments everywhere. And Sometimes people are kind of skeptical about what, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to create music together as a group? And then so often they get into it and they get drumming and their barriers go down. I had one woman actually tell me that her husband at a conference was nervous. <laughs> He's more introverted. And and then he got drumming because I really, it's a guided process um, that I help facilitate. And she said that he turned to her at the end of our drumming together 
And he was like, hey, he's like, I can do anything in this conference now. He's like, I just did something that was scary, but I was able to do it. And I didn't know I could do it. And now I could do anything, you know, in a conference. It was a conference a lot about networking and building connections. And he just kind of broke out of his shell. And the drum helped to be an instrument of that. The drum is an instrument of self-expression and a way to express ourselves emotionally too. You probably already know music goes beyond words, right? With the kinds of deep connections that we can make with other people and with ourselves. So I get really excited about that. So to show you some instruments then, I, I lifted this one up a second ago. This is made out of cowhide. Um, and I'm just gonna scoot that back. See, it's bell shaped right here. This is a djembe, and djembe's originated from West Africa. And and I usually teach people like there's a, a bass sound that we make that's nice and low and grounding. And then when we move our hands closer to our body, there's a tone sound where it's higher pitch. So and we'll just play some easy rhythms together and usually have some singing. And do oh, I don't know. I can't I can't spoil it with all what we do, but it is something where we build on it. It starts out really simple, much more simple than what I just showed you. It's just like making a sound on the drum, right? And kind of connecting with it. And I have these little mini djembe's. During both of my presentations at the energy conference, I'll do a drawing for a free drum. <laughs> and um, I love these little djembe's, you know, where you can make it up as well through this but it, it resonates too where you can do that low and high tone you can make so many different sounds which is one instrument which i think is a lot of fun and then i bring a lot of like small percussion instruments um you know things like shakers or like this is a rain stick that i got in peru and actually as a quick tangent, because I've got a lot of instruments here from Peru. Um, when I went to Peru a few years ago, it was before I had started doing drum circles and I just was getting, I prepared to, to do plant medicine when I went to, to work with a shaman in Peru and had worked with a shaman in Iceland and was starting to have some really deeply meaningful experiences where I was starting to get these intuitive hits that, um, you know, I was working as a therapist at the time but that I was being led to do something with music too. And I didn't know what that was. But when I was in Peru, I couldn't stop buying instruments. And um, <laughs> I went home with three checked bags of instruments. Like I had a small guitar, I had a harp, I had the rain stick, I had a lot of small percussion, like handheld percussion instruments that I'm gonna show you. Um, you know, I had a couple of drums that I took home with me, like it, and a lot of flutes, six different native flutes. Oh, I wish I had one to show right now. And it was soon after Peru um, that I found out that some people run drum circles for a living. And I was like, you can do that. Like, that's possible. And then I bought, um, you know, I have about 50 larger drums, kind of like this one um, now, and started doing drum circles. So it's fun with the drumming. We like to, I like to implement other kinds of sounds. So there are drums, but then there are also <laughs> little things like this. If you've seen these little guys before, um, it's a little frog gyro. And so it's really fun because, because we'll be drumming and then I'll have all the drums cut out and just the people with the little frogs will make sounds. And then we all come back in drumming again. I mean, it's obviously one of those experiences. Well, one of those things where you just have to kind of experience. This is the Gyoro. I've got a bunch of these from Peru. And you just scrape it, you know? I mean, you just get it and scrape. Like, these are easy to play instruments. Um, you know, like different, these are little hooves, like all kinds of different shakers, like I'm saying. These little guys are cassinets. Where you said you just move your fingers and like little finger symbols, <laughs> which is bringing lots of different um, sounds and voices. This is a no go go bell. 
This is a kielbasa. So like, um, stand by me. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, just kind of scrape it like that. And then I I like to have. Um, it depends on what I'm doing for my drum circle, but I have a lot of sound healing instruments too. I have, well, like here you can see I've got a set of crystal bowls, which I bet many of you are familiar with. I also have here, this is a crystal heart. And so it's made out of quartz crystal. Like the bowls kind of resonates like the really like how this resonates. I got this, um, well, it's from Russia. I had it ordered from Russia. There's something very healing about music and sound. And a lot of these instruments that create vibrations, right? It's a vibrational healing. This is one that I really love. So that was a crystal harp. This is a still tongue drum. Um, what I love about this one is that it glows in the dark. I actually bought it to take it to Iceland with me because I wanted to play it in like the ice caves there. But where it resonates and vibrates. I think that's a beautiful instrument. I used to play it in my kids' room in the dark. Like, I would just sit on their floor and play it while they were falling asleep. <laughs> um, let's see, I've got some bongos here. Uh, this one, this instrument. I love, I love having this at drum circles. Let's go ahead and play it for you first. drum. It's got all these little beads in it and makes the sound, not when I play it that way, but it makes the sound like that ocean, which I think is, is fun, but it's, they're easy to play, right? Like I said, I want to make this accessible, <laughs> easily accessible. Um, and, and I get so much feedback after drum circles where people are like, wow, like that was, you know, easier than I thought it would be. Right? Or that was more natural or, oh, I really, you know, had more rhythm than I thought because most people don't think they have a sense of rhythm until I put a drum in front of them. And then suddenly, like, they have these rhythms inside of them because we're made of rhythm. You know, they have these rhythms that they're, like, expressing through this instrument. I think it's amazing because, like, there's, there's a rhythm while, well, like, our heartbeat is an obvious rhythm, right? But there's also a rhythm to how we breathe, to how we speak, to how we move. And so getting more in sync with that, with ourselves and with others, it's a beautiful way to connect. Um, and, oh, I have one more I want to, well, two more I want to show you. This is um, a slit tongue drum. And so this one's made out of wood, and that other steel tongue drum was made out of metal. But this one's fun. just you know a unique different sound to it and then it's always nice kind of at the end of a lot of drumming when we start doing more of these meditative instruments I love these koshi chimes they've got all these still bars inside of them yeah they're just kind of have this magical sound to them. Love those. So I get really excited, you know? I mean, I said I'm a therapist, um, a mental health therapist. I love sound healing. I love facilitating drum circles. Um, I think more than any of that, I'm, I consider myself a collector of instruments <laughs> and I love to get instruments into people's hands. 
and to be able to start having this kind of experience together. I think it's deeply healing. And there's evidence, there's um, research, you know, that backs that up. Where I said, drumming in a group like this is actually an evidence-based practice where they found that actually like it, it improves your mood, you know, it helps bring about relaxation or relieving stress. It also like boosts the immune system, your immune system, your natural killer cells actually increase and they're the cells that help um, battle cancer. So I think that's really cool. Then they've done that from taking blood tests before and after people do an hour of group drumming. And so, and then going back to, as a therapist, I do something called EMDR and EMDR, it's eye movement, desensitization, and reprocessing. And so it's as your eyes move back and forth, like during REM sleep, that's when it's believed that your brain is processing all that you did during the day. Um, and when we initiate that same kind of left and right motion, it gets your left and right hemispheres of the brain interacting together and it helps you process things like trauma or reprocess other distressing or upsetting things that have happened in your life. It's just getting your whole brain on online. That's called bilateral stimulation. <laughs> and you can do it by like, you know, tapping yourself too, or doing things like drumming or walking or running, you know, that can do a lot to help clear your mind, help you see things differently. And it's interesting because um, when, <laughs> so Francine Shapiro, who's the originator of EMDR, she once was studying African tribes and where you would have these warriors go to battle and then they would come home and the community would gather together. And they would be dancing and drumming. And they would find that PTSD wasn't a problem for these warriors. Because the drumming and the dancing served as like bilateral stimulation. Like it was basically doing group EMDR. You would have these warriors come home and they would bring their trauma, right? And then they would drum it out and they would dance it out. And how healing that is, right? I really like to take these ancient indigenous practices, drumming and meditation and sound healing, and, and use them for people now. And also all the science is backing it up. It's like, um, I don't know, bridging like the science of psychotherapy with the spirit of indigenous healing. I think it's beautiful. And a drum circle is a wonderful way to be able to do that. And, um, and I think it's fun. So anyway, but yeah, if you want to find out more, um, you should come to the conference. It's going to be a great conference. Check out the drum circle. <laughs> um, like I said, there's going to be something for everyone to do where it can be something that's comfortable, like in your comfort zone, but it's kind of good to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone too. And so the drum, the community drum circle is going to be six o'clock on Friday. And then that Saturday morning at nine o'clock, um, I've got to be like first to go because I'm going to have instruments on all of the chairs or next to the chairs with the drums. And, and they will be talking about, like I said, psychotherapy and spirituality, right? How do they connect? How does drumming connect them? And what benefit can it have in our lives? Something I like to do with clients one-on-one -on -one and also with groups is take them through this process. I call it the ACT process. Um, which is, it stands for like ACT, it stands for the importance of awareness and connection and how that creates transformation, ACT. And so I like to help people on their individual journeys when they come and see me as a therapist. And, you know, I provide therapy one-on-one. -on -one. I'm licensed in Utah and Idaho. I can do online therapy or telehealth therapy. Um, but I love working with the groups too. And kind of creating these group EMDR, you know, sessions for people. And as a group, we strengthen our awareness. Like, okay, you know, what is it I'm experiencing, thinking and feeling? How do I express, express that with the drum? And then how does the drumming connect me, right? How do we have connection as a group with each other? As we connect more deeply with ourselves and then each other. And then how does that bring about transformation? It's just this beautiful process that I love to do with people. 
And so check out blowingrivercircle.com. If you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send a free offering to you that I love. It's one of my favorite techniques to use in therapy. It's called the RAIN approach. It's a meditative exercise that I use all the time. And um, and then, you know, you can find out about like, my online course or other events I do. But now it is Shallon's turn. Um, she is going to be the next one. And um, yeah. So she should be able to take over and she's delightful. <laughs> so hopefully I'll see you at the conference. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Hi there, you guys. How you doing? Um, Sorry, it took me a second to get on there. I'm Shallon Sorensen, and I will be speaking at our Energy Healing Conference in June, uh, on June on Saturday at 11 a.m. And I am the owner of Into His Own Academy. I am a foot zone practitioner. I have been foot zoning for over 12 years and been practicing energy work for over 12 years. I have been teaching for over 20 years and I am a mom of four children and I, hello, hi Joy. <laughs> um, I love teaching. I love connecting with people. I love holistic modalities. I have a passion. I have a huge heart and I just love helping people and I love teaching people and I love helping people understand these things that are hard to make sense of sometimes. Uh, so today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about foot zoning. Um, at our energy healing conference, I'll be talking more about intuition and logic. I like my classes, my public classes like this to be really actionable. I want you guys to be able to take what I'm teaching and use it right here, right now. So today I'm going to be giving you Foot zone signals that you can use on yourself, on your kids, on your friends and family. And at the Energy Healing Conference, we're going, we're going to be talking about intuition and logic and how to balance the two to create a holistic, whole body approach to the way we live. Um, and you'd think that foot zoning and that and intuition and logic are two separate things, but they're actually not. I love foot zoning because it takes intuition and logic and it puts them together. It's why it's one of my favorite uh, modalities. Um, I have a lot of different types of training, uh, but I always come back to the first training I learned, which is foot zoning, because it has a very logical, systematic approach and I can rely on everything else that I've learned and pull in intuition and really help people um, make a difference in their life, make changes in their life and start, start getting um, results in their lives by combining intuition and logic. And I do that with the foot zone. Uh, so how are you guys doing today? Um, who knows what foot zoning is? Go ahead and say me, I know what foot zoning is. Uh, if you don't know what foot zoning is, let me know. I also want to know where you're from. I teach all across the nation. I would love to hear where you guys are from um, and if foot zoning, if you know of any foot zoners in your area, I know um, practitioners are pretty common in Utah, but when you get out into other, other states, it can be a little bit difficult to find a foot zone practitioner. <clears throat> I'll wait here to see if I see any comments. Hello. We've got people in Idaho. Uh, Idaho is pretty common to find foot zone practitioners as well. Uh, so let's talk about what the foot zone is, just to cover our bases, just in case you don't know. Um, the foot zone is a holistic modality. So it, a holistic modality looks at the whole body. It's looking at physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. It, is not just looking at a physical symptom and chasing that symptom to try to figure out how to get rid of it. We're actually focusing on the body and the whole person 
and trying to help the body, the person exist better as a whole. And those symptoms typically go away um, when we treat the whole body. Um, Hey, so it does look like your sound is gone, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> so I was just sitting here watching and I'm like, I can hear her just fine. And now I can't. So let me see what I can do to help. Oh, it says your mic is not connected. Oh, there we go. <laughs> why was nope. I muted? That's so funny. You weren't muted. It said that you're... Uh, it said your microphone was not connected. So I, when I went to go and like unmute oh, you, it said, oh, she's not connected. Anyway, I'll jump off and let you keep going. <laughs> You're doing great. Tricky. We love technology, right? Um, can you guys still hear me? I just 
I unplugged my mic. That's why I said my tech wasn't working. Um, can you hear me now? <laughs> Joy says, I'm glad it's not, not just me and my ears. Can you guys still hear me now that I've plugged my um, lapel mic back in? Yes. Okay. Um, all righty. So I don't know where I lost our sound. <laughs> so I'll backtrack just a little bit. Um, let's see. Where was I? So we were talking about the foot zone being a whole body approach. And when we come in and work the feet, we're working the signals in the entire body. We are going through the entire body in a systematic way. It's very logical. Um, there, we have a background on studies, doctors that have used pressure in the feet to, to use the pressure in the feet as an analgesic during minor surgeries instead of using pain medication. And these pressure points in the feet really do connect to that nervous system and help the body relax and let go and feel less pain. Um, and when we get into those signals as foot zone practitioners, um, at least many set foot zone practitioners, especially the students that come to my course, uh, because I focus on the map of the foot and I focus on teaching my students intuition and energy work so that they know how to come in with intuition, with logic, the logical map and the intuition and the energy work. And when we come into those signals, and we're hitting all of those signals, we can also feel the energy of it and do energy work in there and hit those, those energy systems and help the body let go of anything that it needs to let go of, emotions, um, false beliefs, and those things that can be underneath those physical issues. Um, <clears throat> so that's what the flip zone is. I kind of... Uh, Got a little bit distracted there with our mic, but hopefully you guys understand what the foot zone is. Do you guys have any questions about what the foot zone is? Um, who wants to learn more about foot zoning? Say me. I have a foot zone foundation course. I'm going to give away some uh, scholarships today. If you guys want to get into my free foot zone for foundation course, uh, say uh, scholarship in the comments. And I'm going to give it through the weekend so people can watch the replay. And on Monday, I'll be giving away several scholarships, uh, five. I'll be giving away five scholarships. Five. Oh, my goodness. So many. You guys are going to be loving my Foot Zone Foundation course. It's um, five hours of recorded class from me personally where we dig into what the Foot Zone is, how to, the basics of energy, um, how to um, and some of the areas and things in the foot zone. So it gives you some really practical foundational knowledge on the foot zone. So stay scholarship in our tech, in our chat, <laughs> in the chat, if you would like to get a scholarship and I'll contact you on Monday if you're one of the winners. Um, all right. So the next thing I want to go into is a frequently asked question that I get. And I've covered it on this page before, but we always have new listeners and I want to make sure you guys understand. One of the first questions I always get is what's the difference between foot zoning and reflexology? And the answer is they're really, really similar. They're both pressure points on the feet. They've accessed the same types of signals. Many of the signals are the same. Um, the difference is we have the same history, but in the 1800s, a man named Charles Erstow was looking at the reflexology map and said, why is this working for some people and not others? And um, he started to realize, he realized that the reflexology points only covered the bottom of the foot, which is the more internal stuff, the organs and things like that. And he realized that we needed to treat the whole body and not just the the one point for so say um, somebody has a headache and it's logical for me to go in and hit the brain right for the headache but what if the headache the reason behind the headache is because somebody has um, 
been around too many chemicals and we need to detox their liver. And so there are so many underlying things in a body that all these little micro causes that equal a physical symptom. And if I, as a practitioner, am just trying to figure out what those micro causes are, and I'm pushing this point here and that point there, I may be missing one of those, those micro causes. Um, if we treat the entire body every single time, that whole body approach, then we're hitting all of the signals every single time. And we're trusting the body that it knows all of the micro causes and it can work it out. So the flip zone is a very whole body. We're working the whole body. And reflexology has started to move in that direction over the years as well. So they're like cousins. We just had a little branch in our history and they're really similar practices. But the flip zone is if you go to a practitioner, you're always going to get that whole body treatment. And we, we very much rely on the body healing itself. The body knows what to do. If you get a cut, it makes a scab. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're doing. We're just creating the space and helping the body uh, feel safe, relaxed, let go of what it needs to so that it can do the healing that it needs to. And all the healing, any healing that is done goes, all the credit goes to the body, not to us as practitioners. Um, and we can't make any medical claims here. Uh, we're just working those feet and trusting the body to do what it knows how to do best. Uh, like, okay, let's move along here. Who wants to learn some points on the feet? Yes, I do. Well, I'm always at, up to learning new ones. <laughs> Um, and developing new ones. I actually am working on developing a new point in the feet right now, something that I've been learning since uh, COVID happened. I'm really excited to release that in my next class coming up this fall uh, into a zone academy has a class opening up this fall in September. Um, what, what kind of issues do you guys have? Give me an issue that, that you're struggling with and I'll show you some points on the feet that can help with it. Um, a really common issue is um, headaches, right? So I already mentioned headaches before, but, and this is what I'm saying, when we're, when we go in and do spot treatments, it can help, but the whole foot zone will come in and hit any little micro issues that are underneath that headache much better than just a single signal. But the head is in the feet, in the toes, right up here. When you look at the toes, those are your head. So on the tops of the toes, we have the sinuses and things like that. And on the bottom of the toes, we have the brain. So if we're, if we rub the bottoms of our toes right here on the pads of the toes in a circular motion and then pull down like this, rub those toes in a circular motion and then pull down the toes. That should help relieve pressure in the head. It should help with pain. And you can work, you can work that pad of the toe pretty deeply because that pressure will cause an analgesic effect and help reduce pain and open up the blood flow. Okay. So we work these toes in a circular motion and down. Um, that's a really simplified version. When we get into the brain, I mean, I think I have 27 maybe more signals just on this big toe. So we get really specific in there. Uh, but for the sake of today, we're going to just work it in a circular motion and down. And that helps relieve that pressure. We can also come across the tops of the toes with our fingernails. This one's hard to show. Fingernails and, and just scrape the tops of the toes with the fingernail. And that helps relieve pressure in the head as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, Alice says knee pain. Okay, knee pain. The knee, oof, the knee is, darn it, that's a tricky one. I, my students um, struggle to find the knee and it takes us a couple of months for them to learn how to really find the knee signal. Um, so I'll give you a really general, general area to work so that we make sure that you cover the knee signal if you're working this entire area, you'll get the knee signal. 
Okay, so on the outside of the foot, the lateral side of the foot, um, anatomy and physiology, the inside is medial and the outside is lateral. This is the lateral side of the foot. And right here um, on the side of the foot is the knee signal right up in here. So if you work this side of the foot down from the ankle down to the toes in a circular motion, if we work in circular motions, it helps us um, work the energy out. So if you work this side right up in here in circular motions, that should help with um, opening up that knee and helping it let go of some inflammation and pain. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Lori said she just had eye surgery. What can help? Lori, the eyes are right here uh, underneath. See these toes we have, if we count our toes, one, two, three, four, five, from the big toe is number one. Toes number two and three have the eyes on them. And right underneath that big pad of the toe, right underneath it, if we hook right underneath right there, those are the eye muscles, okay? And if so if you're, it's like giving your eye muscles a nice massage. And so you can rub right across the bottoms of the toes right there. And then we can also rub down the toes right here to help those eyes relax and um, help the circulation in them, help the cell regeneration in them, um, help those eyes recover. Uh, <laughs> Joy says she loves my foot. I love my foot too. You guys, I may have been a total geek and did a dance when I found these feet. <laughs> Um, I think I'm out of time, so I better finish up. Um, I'm really, really excited to talk to you guys about intuition and logic in our class at the Energy Healing Conference. I mean, I am developing a class right now on intuition. My foot zone school always brings in intuition. My students all learn how to be intuitive foot zone practitioners. If you are interested in my foot zone foundation course, if you're interested in being a foot zone practitioner and want to come and learn from me, my website is www.intua.zone. Intua, like intuitive, I-N-T-U-I, dot zone, uh, no dot com. <laughs> and you can go there to see what classes I have available. Um, like I said, an intuition class is coming this summer. I'm really excited to release it. I do also do um, continuing education for current foot zone practitioners that are looking to um, develop a more intuitive approach to their practice. So reach out to me if you're interested in that. Um, make sure you throw in scholarship, foot zone foundation scholarship into the comments if you want to win one of those. And I am happy to be here with you today. Please come to my class on Saturday at 11 a.m. June 25th. Uh, we're going to have a fun time. I have a lot of fun with my audience. I always teach them really usable things. And I'm really excited to hang out with you guys that day. Okay, um, next up, next up, we have, um, oh, I had her name. I lost her name. Kathy, help me. Who's up next? Um, I think her name is Michelle. Sorry, you guys. Yes, Michelle. Michelle is up next. And I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed chatting with you guys today. And we'll talk to you later. Hi, thanks, Shallon. Um, so fun to follow you when you were talking about foot zoning because I love foot zoning and it relates to the eyes and I'm an iridologist. So um, I was just thinking, I've been listening um, backstage. I listened to Cami and just felt so inspired by the the music. And um, I had all these things fun to, to share with you today. And I kind of feel like I might go in a different direction. So feel free to ask um, questions and I'll try to respond in the chat. But first of all, um, I am Michelle Gilbert and I have 
um, been in the natural world for about 15 years now, but I started out loving medicine and I wanted to become a doctor. That was my dream ever since I was a little girl. Actually, when I was about eight years old, all I wanted for Christmas was a pair of crutches. <laughs> and I actually got them. People ask that all the time, but I did. And I I love medicine and I um, worked in it and had a passion. Every time I'd walk in a hospital, I just get so excited. I just love the energy of it. But after I had my first son, the medical system just wasn't giving me the answers I needed. And I had a friend recommend some natural remedies. And um, I just immediately found the results I wanted and started studying. And I became a master herbalist with the School of Natural Healing, if anyone knows Dr. Christopher and his stuff. And I fell in love with herbs and that lifestyle. But um, things kind of got overwhelming as I had more kids and took on so many clients. And I um, have to laugh because I, as much as I loved doing all of the things for people, it just got to be a lot. And I don't know if, how you guys feel, but um, when you go to healing conferences like this, have you ever just walked away thinking, oh my gosh, I have to live on vegetables for the rest of my life. And, um, then I'll be healthy and I'll, I can't go outside and I can't use my phone and it just gets to be a lot. That's kind of how I felt. And, um, I just decided that I wanted to get away and do something. And so one day I was driving in the car with my husband and I said, I just want to live by the beach. And he's like, why don't you? And um, I was like, really? Anyway, a couple of months later, we dropped everything and moved to the island of Samoa. And um, we didn't know anyone there, didn't have any big plans for jobs and stuff, just kind of went with it. And um, it was such an amazing experience. But soon after we arrived there, we had the opportunity to adopt a little girl that we were given. It's, it's a long story. Maybe I can share more later. But um, she had a staph infection and um, I had eczema on my hands and I ended up getting the staph infection. And then they took this little girl away from us and they wanted us to buy her illegally. And I wasn't okay with doing that. Like we wanted to change the, the laws um, for these children in Samoa because this baby that we had, her name was Tally. She um, was the product of incest and her mother was 11 years old. And um, it's kind of heartbreaking to think about, but um, I wanted to raise money to help these children. And so we started collecting sea glass and turning it into beautiful jewelry to raise money for these children. And um, our motto became in the waves tossed and torn, now refined, I'm ocean worn. And ocean worn is a company that gives back, that we want to help people. And we were able to change so many of the laws in Samoa. And some of those kids um, have better lives now, but um, so many live in a better shelter and have um, greater opportunities. And I, I feel so grateful that I got to be a part of it as heartbreaking as it was. And some of the health conditions that I had there, um, I ended up getting dengue fever led me to a deeper understanding of health and nutrition. And so um, when I came back to the States, I knew that I wanted to give back, but not in the same way that I used to before, because I used to feel like just eating a healthy diet and doing all the right things will get you the health that you wanted. And I'm telling you, raise your hand if you've ever had perfection syndrome, like you just want to do all the things and be perfect. And um the energy that I'm getting from my clients today and people around me is that this feels overwhelming. This is so hard. I don't know if I can do it all. I don't know if my family will be on board. I can't do this for the long term. And um, especially when I look into people's eyes, I, I really feel that um, energy. And I want to give you a few tips and things that I recommend to help you really fall in love with this healthy lifestyle so it doesn't have to be something that's painful or difficult. So um, how many of you know about iridology? I know we've had two other iridologists come on and it was super fun to hear what they had to say, but I want to give you a few suggestions. So this is um, a chart of our eyes. So if you were to look right um, around the outside of your iris is your skin. So um, if you look at 
that part that that's the outer part of of your whole being well our skin is our protection right and um we sometimes put up walls have you ever done that and you don't feel safe and um our skin can like bring things in or help release things it can be a detox place but um it also is a place for allergies and people get rashes and um, there's so many things tied to your skin about um, have you ever put up a wall and felt unsafe and need to protect yourself, but you feel like the world outside is unsafe. So I want you to just get really close in the mirror and look at that outer ring on your eye. Is it dark? Um, does it have a white circle around it? Are there other things that you see? And then connect that to maybe some of the emotions you're feeling. Um, another thing to look at that everyone can see is the what we call the constitution of your eye. So I know these pictures aren't great here, but if you if you look at this eye, it's um, or this eye over here has really good structure, like all the lines around the eye are close together, and that would be considered a strong constitution. But if you look, I know this is horrible, but this picture right here, can you see all those holes and gaps? This is hard to hold up, <laughs> but. Um, those, those gaps would show weakness in your constitution. And um, it's so amazing to, to just look into someone's eye really close. <laughs> I know it's a little uncomfortable, but you can see um, the strength of their constitution or the weaknesses that they carry. And I say strength and weakness um, really liberally because if you look into someone's eye that has a strong constitution, it means that they're less prone to getting sick maybe and um, things are able to bounce off of them better. But um, some strengths of a weak constitution would that people be that people are really aware of themselves and they're more in tune to the energies around them and they can take care of themselves on an intuitive basis. So both of them have really good, um, strong characteristics and things that um, can teach them a lot. So I, I really want you to look into your eye and um, see those things. Now, tying that together with what I said before, it can be overwhelming to um, think about the good and the bad and what should I do and what should I not do? What, what if I have a weak constitution? How do I um, fix all these things? And when I look into eyes, you know, I can see so many weaknesses in different areas of the body and I will give people um, herbal recommendations based on my um, master herbalist thing and the, um, iridology suggestions and seriously it can be overwhelming and I completely understand that and so I started just changing instead of just giving them a list do this do this do this eat this way um, don't ever use a microwave <laughs> be careful when you're out in the sun but make sure you're in the sun and you need your vitamin D but don't take too much <laughs> um, it can be a lot and I know some of you are commenting in the comments I, I see that that you felt the same way so what can we do um, the first thing I want to say is if you had a, a perfect master healer that you had access to, would you go? Would you go see them? Would you answer their phone call if they called you? How much value would you put on the information that they gave you? And um, so many people would say, yes, I would I would sacrifice so many things just to talk to this person. Right. Well, um, in, a, in an open receiving way, I want you to open your hands and then put them onto your heart. And I want you to realize that the master healer is already inside of you. I know all of us have different chronic issues and um, from all the way to just a little irritation to things that just are debilitating. But I want you to know that your body is perfectly able to fix everything. And um, sometimes we need a little help with that. It's true, but it's the power is already inside of you. And one thing I like to relate this to is um, a, a big, huge oak tree. Have you ever seen those oak trees? Well, they all started out as, as what? A little acorn. And this is a little uh, stone acorn that I have. Inside of an acorn is everything already needed for this great oak to become huge and beautiful, right? It doesn't have little tiny branches somewhere inside there and it just grows. It has the intuitive knowledge of how to grow, but it needs to be nurtured, right? And I want to start um, teaching health in a way 
that teaches you to nurture what's inside, to listen deeply, and to find healing from yourself. And that can lead you to get help outside of you if you need it. Um, I start creating healthy habits that don't feel overwhelming because especially with kids, because I'm the mom of four kids and a teenager, they don't always want to eat kale every day. <laughs> Shocker, right? But um, I have learned that sometimes it's okay to not be perfect and um, just breathe deeply with me and think about that feeling of perfection. If you carry that energy inside of you. And what can we do to start making life with healing, not be about perfection, but be about intuition and self-love. The first thing um, I like to do every morning is to, I like to hold my hands on my heart a lot because it helps me to tune into my body. And I take three deep breaths when I wake up and I um, try to set an intention for the day. What do I want to achieve? What am I capable of? What's going to feel overwhelming? And how can I deal with that? And I get up and I ground my feet on the floor and I stretch and I just say gratitude for a couple of things. The other um, morning routine I just absolutely love is I created these shower diffusers. This is just a, a little piece of clay that I hooked on a string and I hang from the back of my shower head. But um, I get in the shower every morning and I put some essential oils on the diffuser. Now, if you're familiar with essential oils, which most of you are, did you know that most um, man-made products um, resonate at a low energy, but essential oils are one of the highest um, vibrational frequencies that they have ever measured. So when you put oil um, in a diffuser, it automatically increases your vibration. So I put essential oil on the diffuser. I breathe in deeply and I check in with my body. Once again, I'll hold my hands on my heart, take those three deep breaths and see how my body is feeling. So will you do that with me? You put your hands on your chest, take three deep breaths and breathe out your mouth and breathe in through your nose and see how your body is feeling. I want you to picture light coming down on top of your head and filling your body. Think about if there's any blockages that that light isn't getting to. A lot of people will carry stress right in their neck or, or they'll have headaches. And so immediately when they're trying to bring that light in, the light gets stopped. And um, I want you to picture that, picture that light coming in. Is there anything stopping it? If it's tension in your head or your neck, I want you to see how that light's moving. Is it stuck? And what's it stuck on? Picture that energy there that's stopping it. Is it like a black chaotic mess of energy? Does it have a different color? It could be red or yellow. And what does it look like? Is it like a huge heavy block or is it just moving energy? And I want you to picture that energy and move it. So um, like Qigong, just start taking the energy and circling it into a ball, whether in your mind or with your hands and, and use that to start bringing it in and align your energy um, and then bring it out and hold it in front of you. And as you're holding that ball of energy, what do you want to do with it? Most people say, I just want to throw it away. So um, start um, throwing that garbage out. And as you look at the different health things inside of you, don't picture them as negatives that you um, are stuck with, that your body's horrible, just like that big oak tree. You would want to nourish it instead of like get frustrated that it's dehydrated, right? And the leaves are wilting. Instead, you would water it and love it. So instead of seeing that negative type mass or energy, see it as a positive and use it to say, how is my body talking to me? What is it already saying inside? And how can I listen? How can I use this for good? Um, what is it telling me? And start changing the way you look at life. So when you're eating um, a salad, for lunch, think about how um, nourishing the salad is. If you know the studies done by Masaru Emoto, he um, talked about the healing energies of words and how the, that can structure or restructure the water. And um, so as you drink a cup of fresh water, say thank you and have that 
restructure the water. So instead of just drinking water, it can be something that is very healing. And that will do the same for food because food is full of water. So um, anyway, those are just some of the things that I highly recommend to start changing your life. So um, what do I do? So if you come in and see me, um, I have a friend that I work with. Um, her name is Tasha. We have a camera that can take in-depth pictures of your eyes and we can do full eye readings and eye scans. I do um, offer some free readings at the shows where I'll just have you sit down and do a couple of those eye scans, but we're also giving away um, a bunch of the, the camera readings so we can go in and do that. And that can give you a full health scan. And we also recommend the herbs and lifestyle things that will help you change the energy of your life. I don't want you to just come in and rely on me every time you have a health issue come up. I want you to start being able to know what your body needs, reach out if you need help, but intuitively help and heal yourself too. I want you to be like that acorn that can grow and be nourished and loved mostly from the thoughts and the words that you say to yourself. So um, I also do classes. Um, I love it when groups of people get together and want me to teach a class. I teach on how to make your own oils and tinctures and salves. I love skincare class because um, I love teaching people new ways to treat their skin. And I had burned my face really badly and learned all about skincare. So things like that um, are some of my favorite classes. If you go onto my website, www.ocean-warren.com, you can sign up for some of those classes. And um, I, I'm happy to guide you through that. You can email me at um, oceanwarn at ocean-warn.com. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions. But um, I um, am so excited to see you. I'll be teaching Friday evening at 5 o'clock p.m. And I'll also have a booth. I'll be offering products like my essential oil diffusers. I'll have some of the acorns. I have some of the, my skincare line and um, jewelry and things that help find, bring joy and life to your um, already good habits that you're doing and help you um, start creating better habits. So come and talk to me. I'd love to, to see you and say hi. But um, this has been a wonderful show. Thanks again to Cammie and Shallon for um, all the, the wonderful things you taught and for bringing up my energy today. I'm so excited to get to see you guys at the show too. So thank you everyone for being here and I'll see you soon.